Shut up and sit down. Hello and welcome to Nerdthum's Levels of Ridiculousness podcast. I'm your host, Ospin, and I'm joined by my co-host and buddy, DK. Hello, people. Levels of Ridiculousness, or Lore, is a show dedicated to our conversations on all things nerd. We touch on a wide variety of subjects and news and feature a different main discussion topic every week. This week's main topic is anime heartstrings. But before that, we're going to go into channel updates for Nerddom. Okay, you uh, you go first. You have been the most uh, productive with well, the new things you've been doing. Not really. <laughs> uh, we are well. We record that episode of Gauntlet. Yeah, the one off when we got uh, shit faced. <laughs> okay, uh, so we recorded a short let's play of us playing Gauntlet for PS4. I don't know the actual like. What's the name of the game? It's just Gauntlet. It's just Gauntlet. Okay. Um, and we were both kind of tipsy. so And the Green Reaper was <laughs> at us, and we were screaming like little That's girls. why we started to record, because we realized that this is golden. We should be recording this. And yeah, we were being chased by death. Incarnate. No, literal death. Yeah. Okay. The literal Grim Reaper. Such is life. Uh, but yeah, beyond that, we did uh, we did a short episode of Gauntlet, and we started my Let's Play of Dishonored. Yep. Uh, I am no longer the in-control uh, controller in the hand of the Let's Plays. We <laughs> both have one, and uh, he's going to try kill as little as possible, right? I'm, I'm going to try yeah it's, it doesn't it's look like it went that way <laughs> you get you get magic abilities later to where you can evade and do stuff like that yeah uh but yeah uh invest we... in sleep bolts sleep yes yes sleep uh, bolts are your friend but yeah uh we have a short episode of gauntlet that we're probably gonna put up friday it's 45 minutes it's coming up this friday shorter than most let's be honest <clears throat> yeah uh, we're going to put that up Friday, and then next week we will probably be putting up the first episode of my Let's Play of Dishonored. And we'll so, be starting to do that. Yeah, we'll have that be a regular thing that comes out alongside Metal Gear Solid The Phantom Pain. Which is getting interesting. Yeah, yeah. You've, you've, been, uh, you've been doing side missions off screen, off yeah. screen so there, there is progress being made, but we're trying to do the... Uh, you're trying to do the story missions. Yes, yeah, story missions or key side stories. There's side stories that are absolutely necessary to be filmed because they're parts of the story. Yeah. Well, he- heck, I've seen some of them that are just so interesting that you could. Yeah. They the, should be on screen. Like I've seen you infiltrate a, a facility. Frank, frankly, the last time you were playing just to play, I was like, this should be on camera. Yeah. Because <laughs> uh, it was really like you. You. I get brutal. You took too. out like twelve guys. <laughs> yeah. In one little like there there were like twenty something guys. It was a it was a fortress. The location was a fortress. Yes, very much so. And I uh, took them all out without killing one. Which was I've yet to get unlethal suppressed uh, assault rifles though, so I am I'm out. You you picked up a lot of really useful dudes. Yes. I uh, I need to do that more. I'll do that later. But yeah, um the first episode I think we did two episodes of Dishonored, didn't we? Uh, we have part one and part two of the first. Yeah, we, we have the first two episodes of Dishonored ready to go up. So uh, the first uh, two episodes will be part one, part two, and then we'll be doing continuing. Cool. But yeah, do we have any... Uh, my we... updates is that uh, in my job, my full-time job, I'm a security officer, uh, armed security officer. Uh, yeah, that's... I, I got moved to Graveyard. So I now have three days off so I can record more. So there may be more videos later coming up. Uh I don't know yet, but podcasts will be a regulatory thing now. Yeah. It will be happening every, coming out every Wednesday, 10 a.m., between 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. Schedules are aligning. Yes. Finally. Plus, Graveyard's not so bad. Yeah. I've worked Graveyard, and it, it well, we were both working Graveyard at the same time one time, and it's yeah. like that, it kind of destroyed <clears throat> me. The only jobs I've ever worked long-term were Graveyard Shift and... 
The second one wasn't as bad because there were more people around, but the first one was like, I, I need to be able to talk to somebody at some point, you know? Well, I work, I've, I've now <laughs> like there's, this, there's the psychological aspect of being in a house and being up all night and not having the free will to go talk to somebody that you want to talk to Even because everybody's to. sleeping. Yeah. Everyone's asleep. And you know, I've been working security for what? Three years consistent now. I have not been. Without I believe a so. I don't know exactly when you started. But... And, uh, about half of that's a graveyard and I prefer graveyard. Mm-hmm. Uh, usually you get the day off so you can go talk to people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, yeah. so I think that's the end of my my, my point. My point more was more uh, not being able to, to talk to your family because they're sleeping when you're usually awake. Yeah, it's like that. That can get to you. Well, I work two twelves and two eights now, so I have three days where I can talk to my family. Yeah, I'm just speaking from my experience. Uh, I understand, but yeah, do we have any other channel updates? Not really, no. All right, then let's go ahead and move into what we've been up to, and I have a very long list. So, no. <laughs> uh, just start it out. Yeah, the only thing I've been doing <clears throat> updated wise is uh, I I rewatched in another world with a smartphone and realized that it sucks in comparison to the light uh, to the manga. Do you have something else to recommend to me then? Because we we realized after last episode's um, main topic, we recognized that I had recommended. A 26 episode anime to DK, and he'd recommended a 12 episode anime to me. <laughs> I will have to get back to you on a uh, recommendation for an anime. I'm totally like, I'm, first of all, I would love it to be dubbed. I will try to find a dubbed. But that being said, I have already watched a significant number of dubbed anime because my car has been giving me trouble and I've been grounded. So I haven't had much to do other than watch Hulu and Netflix and YouTube. Grounded as in you can't go anywhere or not that you've been punished. Yeah, that you're, goes, you're, you're 25, about to be 26. No, my dad grounded me for breaking the car. <laughs> <laughs> then why the hell were you over here? Because screw the rules. I don't have any money. Fight for your right to party? <laughs> Meh. Actually, funnily enough. Um, funnily enough? Listeners, we are recording this at... 3.20 in the evening on Halloween 2017. So. Spooky. Spooky, spooky skeleton. Unfortunately, I don't believe any of our... Actually, no, we both have a, a short news story that is somewhat spooky. Yep. But we'll get to that later. Um, but yeah, I finished... As far as what I've been up to, I finished Unlimited Blade Works. That show is great. And I'm very happy with it because I went a very long time without seeing Unlimited Blade Works. So I had built it up in my head. You know, I built I built up the idea that this was a good show. And it lived up to that expectation. It, it totally does. Which is hard. It doesn't always happen. I actually, I think one of the reasons why I liked Avengers as much as I did is because I did not let the hype go to my head. Yeah. And the movie was still great. You know, I didn't build up my expectations to expect the best movie ever. But when it came out and it was such a good, good movie and I had kept my expectations low, it kind of plateaued into one of my favorite things of all time. (laughs) I don't know why, but for some reason, uh, the anime Erased came to mind. Erased? Erased. You will love it. It's considered a horror. I'm down. I watched it. It's about a serial killer. And the main guy is trying to catch him. Okay. And he goes back in time. But in his own body. Okay. Well, it does, he doesn't really go back in time so much as... Uh, He's a kid through all this happening. Later in life, stuff goes down. And it's just... Is this... it like the butterfly effect? No. It's a... Uh, uh, Frankly, if I wanted to watch... To... If I wanted to watch, like, one of the horror animes that I've heard is really good, I'd watch Monster. 
because apparently Monster has a really good dub, and it's about it's about basically like it's an anime about Hannibal Lecter. Yeah. But uh, watch Erased. You will love it. Not literally about Hannibal uh, uh, Hannibal Lecter. It's not literally Hannibal Lecter. It's just a character that can get in your head like that. Yeah. Erased? Erased. Okay. We can watch that. We can look at Erased. You gotta remember. I've watched it. You have. But good, because you'll have to rewatch it with me. Okay. (laughs) I'm okay with that. All right, but yeah, I, I yeah, I have a lot of <laughs> oh, things yeah. as far as what I've been up to. Uh, I finished Unlimited Blade Works. Uh, the anime totally lived up to my expectations. Uh, the dub's great, and go sub. Eh, I'm team sub. Eh, I I never liked that. I never liked the whole dub versus sub argument. I, it's not an argument so much as I like reading more than I like. Anything. That's fine, but my eyesight kind of sucks. <laughs> and, so does mine. That's why I have glasses. And if my if my attention is focused on reading, you're not gonna pay attention. To I'm, I can't watch the animation, which for some shows is fine because some shows like oh, a lot of anime like Bleach. Bleach is awesome. Well, it's fine, but a lot of anime, and you tell me if I'm wrong, because I don't think I am. A lot of anime really just loops as far as the animation goes and there's not a lot going on you're wrong there i don't think i'm wrong in the newer more modern it it doesn't loop uh back when it was limited anime has become to one of the most if not the most prospering companies and genres companies the anime company no companies (laughs) companies yeah i know shonen jump funimation all of them are just, they boomed and they got bigger uh, pockets. It, it does, let me, let me put it this way. I haven't consistently watched anime since like 2012. Yeah. A lot of lower budget animes, stuff like Yu-Gi-Oh! Yeah, they Pokemon, loop. They loop, no, no, they no. loop their, and to be specific as to what I'm speaking to, to, to the listeners, uh, there will be moments in an animation where, specifically when they're speaking, where nothing is moving on screen, but their mouths are moving. And all it is, is... Loot. Yeah, it's it's the mouth moving in conjunction to the wording, and it's it's not it's not animated so much as it is... I think, even your, I think even your dad brought up this to you at one point, where... Um, he was like, well, I don't know why you watch that if the animation is just still framed with, <clears throat> excuse me, with their mouths moving once it's in a while. It's changed severely. But, again, Unlimited Blade works, and the animation in that was spectacular. So I have been seeing some things where, where it's better. But there are still times when I'm watching an anime and I see a decline in the animation. It depends on the anime nowadays, but you're not wrong, but you're not right. I'll uh, I'll talk about what else I've been up to with, uh, because that'll lead into what we've been discussing right now. Overlord and My Hero Academy. Okay, Overlord. My Hero Academia. Overlord, I told first, you you needed to watch. Yes, I've watched the first two. Uh, I've watched the first season of both of these shows. Yes, season two of Overlord comes out in 2018. Oh, it's not out yet. No. Okay, good to know. I uh, know My Hero Academy has... Two season, season two or three is out now. I think it's two. Two. Uh, season three is coming. The next season is coming. But they Winter were... is coming. The, uh... The animation for Overlord... It's amazing to me. It's all right. I love it. No, nothing initially the storyline gets jumps me. at me. You know, it's it's a good. <laughs> I, I've 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 ran a character. I'll probably reference this character a lot on this channel. Uh, Muska. Muska from Mondays. He is my Monday Night Warlock who retired and became essentially God of Sigil. Yes, he is the Lord of Swords in Sigil. Uh, when the Lady of Pain more or less disappeared from our setting. She wanted out. She just left. She left. I don't blame her, because there was a divine war going on. We don't know exactly what went on, but she's not there anymore. 
So Muska kind of... He underwent a very highly magical process be- because he's a Genasi. He's like a void Genasi. So he, he was... His paragon path, because that was fourth edition, was he was becoming a sentient aspiration of reality. Oh, God. He, he was basically... Quite literally. Yeah, yeah <laughs> literally. He, he was... He was reality. He was the manifesting he, it. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So he he underwent a sort of process which merged himself with Sigil. So my character isn't just the Lord of Sigil. He is Sigil now. That's true. That being said, before all of that happened, he was essentially Overlord. Because you got to think the the. Fourth I edition, love the main guy in Overlord. Fourth edition characters at higher tier are gods. Yes. And my character had a demigods uh, to be more accurate. My character had a chapel that he could summon that was multiple levels, like multiple floors, which is kind of like what the Overlord His guy castle has. has. He has he has servants who are scarecrows made from the corpses of his enemies. Yes. And he, that is dark, dude. Like he, he would take, he would take the, he, he took a prince of hell and Frankensteined him into a scarecrow who is now his bitch. Are we cussing? Yes. Are you sure we're cussing? I'm not going to censor ourselves for the, for the, this is us being real. I'm, I'm still going to try and avoid cussing myself, but that being said, good luck. He is totally he make he takes his enemies and Frankenstein's them into scarecrow servants that are his bitches, and then uses them to like the guardians and Overlord. It's like I love this show, uh, and I, I was cer- I was certainly uh, geeking out when he he put on the night armor and was dual wielding giant blades. Because oh, that's Muska. Muska is a he started out as a sword mage and became a warlock. Yes. But he dual wields giant blades that are like magically light. And the main guy puts magic armor on. Yeah, he is a sword mage. Armor made an, out of magic. He's a sword mage with emphasis on mage. Well, no, he, he can't. uses his swords to cast his spells and dad gum. I, yeah. I I I got to geek out a little bit for that show. Um and my hero academia is I have not watched it yet. It's good. I, it's very stylized. I think you would like the uh, the main hero, All Might. Yeah, uh, I, I've seen parts of him, but I didn't you read it? Didn't you read the manga? A little bit, uh, about ten chapters. I don't know what that equates to with the. Uh, Not much. Uh, I just I I couldn't get into it. That's fair enough. Uh, I like it. I like it a lot. Maybe I like the anime, but I just I just could not get into it. I've watched a little bit here and there, but nothing concrete. I know J. Michael Tatum is in it, but I haven't actually had the opportunity to pay attention to who he's voicing. And I... I, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know who the voice of All Might is, but he does a great job. And I, I'm going to feel really, really friggin' stupid if J. Michael Tatum is voicing All Might, because J. Michael Tatum is my boy. And I will feel really bad if I don't actually recognize that voice with it being All Might. That's like the equivalent of you and Johnny Young Bosch. Yeah. D- DK actually has an autographed picture of Ichigo for Johnny Young Bosch. I shook his hand and got a picture. Yeah. I'm jealous, because that, that's also one of my boys. <laughs> It's like, so you got to meet Ichigo, Lelouch, and Vash the Stampede. I told him... Get the I, hell... Go, I, go away! I told him that Ichigo was my favorite character he ever voiced, and he vo- he did the character voice and did a line. Like, yeah. Rukia, why are you drawing so bad? It made my fucking year. <laughs> mm-hmm. That... When I was a kid, I went to BotCon, and I met the... the voice actor who plays Starscream in the Unicron trilogy of Transformers. And... He did, like, I asked him, can you do the voice? And he does this whole spiel. <laughs> He's like, of course I can do the voice for you, John. It's like, he does this whole thing, and it's, ah! Uh... <laughs> it's like, I did not, shit. I know, I, I'm very proud of myself, I did not geek out until I walked away. But I geeked out when I walked away. <laughs> oh my god! And, and you know, he, he signed a poster for me and everything, and that, it, it got destroyed a few years later. 
That's depressing. And then I went to another BotCon, and someone had the exact same poster autographed by the exact same guy. Did you get it? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> it made my, you know, it's... Karma was on your side. Con- conventions are great. I, I, I miss being on the convention scene. We'll go to Acon next year. I'd love to go to Acon. Uh, it would it would be great to go to Acon. We'll go to Acon next year. I'll, uh, me and you will go. They, they don't even have BotCons anymore. Yeah. BotCons stopped. They're doing this HasCon thing, which is all of the Hasbro properties in a convention. So, like, Transformers, My Little Pony, G.I. Joe. Oh, God. Eh, all of that in one place, which is fine, but I miss having a convention just for Transformers. Yeah. But, yeah, uh... My Hero Academia, it's great. It's very stylized. The voice acting has been very good. I finished the first season of both My Hero Academia and Overlord. Uh, I guess that's all I have to say about those. Alrighty. They're all right. Are you current with Orville? Uh, up to the seventh episode. I have not watched the seventh. You have all right. I watched the seventh, so I'm I'm current with Orville. Uh, I've been busy working still. My ch- my schedule just changed. I'm not gonna lie. Episode seven. Uh, I think it's called Absolute Authority. Yeah. Or, or something like that. I think it's Absolute Authority or Absolute Democracy or something like that. The episode's a little hard to take. Okay. Uh, it's certainly not as bad as some more difficult to swallow Star Trek episodes. But that being said, I'm watching Orville and I'm not even getting anywhere near Discovery. Okay. Because Discovery is atrocious. I will give Discovery a chance if I literally don't have to pay anything to watch it. Yeah. Which someone has offered to facilitate my watching of Discovery. Not DK. That's not DK. <laughs> I won't. I don't like Star Trek very much. Eh, you're more of the Star Wars guy. I'm not against it. I love the movies. I've seen Voyager to a degree. Voyager's not the best. Doesn't matter. It's the only one I've seen. Uh, uh, Voyager was me and my dad's show as a kid, but you should watch TNT. I've seen the first four original Star Trek movies. Captain, there be whales and all that. (laughs) Which Captain, after that, I signed off. After that, I signed off. To be fair, I'm I'm done. To be fair, uh, oh hell, was that Undiscovered Country with the whales? No, Undiscovered Country is where. I think that's where Kirk. Bought the rock monster. Sorry about that. We actually had some difficult uh, technical difficulties. Had to pause the recording, and uh, then DK almost died eating a Kit Kat. So shut up. <laughs> uh, I chewed too ferociously. <laughs> He's Happy get, Halloween, people! You gotta get that candy. <laughs> get in me. Uh, it is my belly. But right, um, I believe we were. I was discussing Orville. Orville's great, better than Discovery. Orville really gets back to the uh, the heart of Star Trek. Cool. Uh, it's 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 a great show. And I think the last thing I have more that I could talk about, but I'm going to save it for next recording. Yep. The last thing I'm going to talk about is Stranger Things. Which season two just came out. Season two just came out. I have not watched season two yet. I'm s- I am watched season one. I binged it over the course of like three sittings. <laughs> Something like your mom, who I'm pretty sure when season two came out, watched all of it in one sitting. Yes. Texted me when she was done and was like, okay, I'm going to bed. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. hope. She's like, I hope. <laughs> I'm like, oh. She does have some news. So. L- l- let me put it this way. Uh, she texted me Friday night. And then texted me again Saturday morning telling me that she was done. And I'm like, holy crap, I slept. (laughs) (laughs) I slept and like you were still going the whole time I was sleeping. Good job. (laughs) But uh She's a binger. Uh and I I love it. You know, Stranger Things is freaking great. I'm going to watch it, haven't been able to yet. Job and all. I'd love to watch it with you. Um I hear there's an interesting character named Eleven in it. There is. There's also a uh, a kid named Jonathan. But that that being said, I love that actor. 
who I'm going to mention again when we get to nerd news. Okay. But, yeah. Um, Stranger Things, it might be one of my absolute favorite things right now. Funnily enough, like, I'm, I'm a big Walking Dead fan. Like, I kind of, I'm not a big zombie fiction fan, but I can't argue with good storytelling. Yeah. Period. So Walking Dead is kind of my, when someone asks, what's the best bit of television you have, have ever seen? And the answer to that question for me is The Walking Dead consistently. Three Stooges. Supernatural, but only like the first five seasons. Smoky and the Bandit. Heroes, only season one. <laughs> the rest does not exist. That is, as nerds and as members of fandoms, we are all subject to selective amnesia. Yes, to you have to be to exist in this paradigm. You can think of it as your fandom's witness protection program. <laughs> you, you, you can forget that certain things happened. You cannot even acknowledge their existence if you want. I honestly don't know how many seasons Heroes actually had. Five. That being said, season one is standalone enough. You don't need to see anything past season one. It ends like a comic book. Yeah. Uh, Supernatural seasons one through five. I think we're at season three. 13 right now is about to start yep. up supernatural seasons one through five that's the original story that the show runner eric kripke meant to tell and it is self-contained you don't have to say anything past that the walking dead has been spectacular i just have not had the facilities to keep myself current with it i'm actually a year behind everything with negan i have yet to see before we switch over to uh, the next segment, I want to point out that uh, I love Supernatural, all the episodes. That's that's thanks to me. Uh, even past season five. Actually, I, I even made liked you. Season 11 and 12. I made you sit down and watch Supernatural. You're like, yep. eh, I don't really care. And I'm like, no. And now I binge watch it whenever I have free time. Yeah. Um, um, how is it? It's good. It's good it's, now because it's, season six offended me on a personal level. It got better. So it's good. Supernatural? Yes, I, I like it a lot. Where, where did it start getting better? Uh, Season 10? Season 11? I remember season eight was really good. Yeah, it, season eight and nine, they're fairly good. Season 10 and 11, really good. Okay. All right. I'd be willing to give it a chance. It's just that middle ground when they were trying to find their footing with when Kripke <clears throat> left. And they Sarah, found their footing. Sarah Gamble was trying to run it, and I'm pretty sure she's still running it. But I, I don't know what the uh, the production thing kind of looks like right now. Who's in charge of what? It got a lot better after the Leviathan arc. Okay, the Leviathan arc was pretty good. Yes, too. but it got better. Yeah, that's good to hear. That's good to hear. Um, but yeah, Supernatural. Back to The Walking Dead being one of my favorite things right now. Um, Stranger Things is on par with that for me. Okay. And there's not a lot of material out for Stranger Things right now, but it really is just... They start the show playing a and d game. I only watched it on Impulse. You know, I watched the first episode on Impulse. It starts with the kids playing D&D. &D, and and I'm, I'm sold. Yeah. I will forgive a number of things that this show does wrong just for that. Do they play right? I will give it an allowance, and I did not need to give it an allowance. I almost jumped ship. Two of the characters that I like a lot did some kind of questionable stuff at the end of the second episode, which almost made me jump ship. But I was grounded <laughs> because my car was down, so... Why not? I just I kept watching it, and holy crap, it got... Oh my goodness. Stranger Things, people watch Stranger Things. <laughs> um, do you have any, what you've been up to? What have you been reading, playing? Uh, I've been reading a number of uh, light novels. One is uh, essentially, it's called Amber Sword. The Amber Sword. It's a really good light novel. Uh, you can find it on various websites. Uh, the one that I read it on is on uh, 
Wolfie Hon Yuka, which is uh, spelled W O L F I E H O N Y A K U. Hmm. It's the one I, I read it on. It's has easily more than 133 chapters. And it's a really, really good light novel. I've never read a manga, certainly not online, so I don't really have a context for how long a chapter is. Uh, it's a page. A chapter is a page. In a light novel. In a light novel. Oh, okay. Uh, each, they're segmented by a page, so... It, there's, and they're released over... Uh, there's like one a day almost. Light novels? They're, because they're translation. Oh, they're I'd, tra- love, I'd love that. Uh, <laughs> there's uh, n- uh, No Fatigue, uh, which is a light novel from uh, readlightnovels.com. Um, These are they have, text novels, right? Not mangas. Uh, they're text novels. They're like they're light novels uh, translated into English. I've been reading uh, a couple mangas because you know I love reading. Yeah. Uh, I've been reading in another world with smart with uh, my smartphone. It's a good one. Still going? Uh, yes, it's actually English version on a manga reader. Well, while That's you've given me an alternate recommendation, I would still be on board with watching that. Yes. Uh, I'll have to get behind the multiple wives aspect of it. but <laughs> That is, uh, the light novel is better. Uh, there's a reason why he has multiple wives. Uh, I won't get into that. Spoil okay. It. That's fine. Uh, so uh, that's the end of my... Real updates. There's no other new manga I've been reading. Or in the light novel. I'm reading like 12 light novels and like 63 mangas. God. Uh, I read a lot. So you've been... Every day. All right. Uh, I'm good. Okay. Next segment. (laughs) I have a large number of things that I've been watching, but again, I'm saving some of those. Next Uh, segment, Dasu. uh, Next segment is Nerd News. Uh... I will go first. Cool. Hit it. Okay. So, I'm going to go with the Halloween ver- thing first. Pet Cemetery in a remake. I don't expect that to be worth a damn at all. Well, it only has a 47 on Rotten Tomatoes, so the remake is justified. Has- Pet Cemetery is like... C- it's, Cujo. <laughs> it's, it's niche. Yes. But you it know- just got remade, and it boomed in the box office. The uh, remake's out? Of It? It. It. You said It just got remade, and I'm like, yes. oh, I stopped. You were still talking about Pet no, Cemetery. Pet Cemetery just picked up uh, a couple of new, uh, the directors. They've been set in stone, uh, at least uh, less, as long as they don't screw it up. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're going to be okay. And it's uh, the duo that is Dennis Wildmere and Kevin Klosher. Uh, they, uh, they've done. Kevin Costner? No. No. How's it spelled? K O L S C H. Can't pronounce it. I don't know how to pronounce that either. Yeah, I wasn't even going to try. Klausch. Klausch. I was just going to go skim over that. Uh, they've done some uh, really good move, uh, movies, but uh, moving on. Uh, your, your turn for the story. Well, uh, I guess I'll do my kind of creepy story because it is Halloween and it's, it's not as though. It's not exactly a Halloween-related thing or a horror-related thing. It's just... So the New Mutants trailer dropped. Oh, God. And the trailer makes the... Sh- is I'm not sure. Is New Mutants a movie or a, a show? Show. It makes it look like a horror film. Yes. And... I think it's a show. We we both have a buddy who is a big X Men fan, and I intend to ask him exactly what the heck is up with the New Mutants trailer. Because if New Mutants is a horror comic book, then like that makes sense. It's very horror. I did not know that. It's it's horrible. It's horrifying. I didn't know that because uh, shit gets like, dark. Who would who who would have heard that an X Men comic book is a horror comic book? I never would have called that. Especially, especially a comic series called New Mutants. Yeah. 
<laughs> you think they call it something else to draw in a horror audience. But, but that being said, you can edit a trailer for a movie to make the movie look like whatever the hell you want. One of my favorite, yeah. one of my favorite examples is the Mrs. Doubtfire horror trailer. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Which is like, yeah, you can make anything you want look like what, whatever you want. And I'm like, is, are they doing that just cause it's like, it's October and Halloween's a thing or I, I don't know what to make of it. <laughs> I have no idea what to make of the new mutants trailer, but uh, that being said, the New Mutants trailer dropped, everyone. Go watch that and be just as mind-blown as I was. Okay, so speaking of trailers, The Last of Us 2 trailer dropped. The final trailer, right? Uh, I don't know if it's the final one, but it dropped, and it is intense. Uh, you see Ellie muscled up. And yeah, she's older tied now. Tied up. Uh, she's, and the, uh, it's just this mash of horror that the, first off, Last of Us, the game, if you have not played it, play it. It's one of my all time favorite games. I have a giant poster on my wall that Ozpin bought me. Yeah. And I loved Last of Us. I love Joel. <laughs> uh, I do too. I'm a big fan of that type of story. It's why I like Logan so much. They're, they're very similar. I resonate with Joel so much. There's also the, uh, what's that Western? It's uh, 320 to Yuma. Oh, God. Yeah. Which was really freaking good when I saw that, too. It's like those, I love those movies where it's a protector looking over a kid. Actually, that kind of applies to Terminator 2, which is my favorite movie as well. But but uh, if you have not seen The Last of Us uh, trailer, go, uh, go watch it. I'm not going to spoil any of it because... Holy crap, you need to. Okay, Ooh. so that's... Uh, I just wanted to bring that to everybody's attention. Uh, what else have I got? Well, I'll talk about the Justice League trailer. Okay. I think we're pretty much... Is that all we're talking about is trailers until we get to not top stories? No. I, I might, <laughs> I'll rename... I, so help me God, I will rename this top this uh, this topic discussion uh, trailers. <laughs> or oh something God, like that. Don't. I have actual story. But yeah, the uh, the Justice League trailer. The one where I I don't I don't know what to think about Justice League, honestly. I I'm I'm talking about the Comic Con Justice League trailer. Yeah. And while I have not expected anything from the Justice League movie, because honestly, I have no faith in the DC universe movies. I have no faith whatsoever. You're a Marvel I'm, guy, I guess. I'm a Marvel guy. But I'm I, DC. <laughs> I love Wonder Woman, and I haven't seen the movie. The movie's on DVD and Blu-ray at this point, by the way. That being said, I love Wonder Woman. I still haven't seen it. It's how little faith I have in the in the DC movies. It's I love a... the Man of Steel. Man of Steel was great, and then they just started trying to throw everything they could. Like they're throwing they're throwing things at the wall without any consideration as to where they land or if they even stick. Yeah. You know, they're, 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 they're trying to catch up to Marvel and they shouldn't be. No, they shouldn't. They're, they're, that is exactly what they're doing, which is one of the reasons, like the comic books, they did the same thing. DC had the reboot. Marvel had a reboot. And did it right. No, they didn't. Marvel did. No, Marvel did not do it right. Really? Mar Marvel screwed it up spectacularly. Now the new 52 was just as much of a screw up. Oh, you're talking about comic books. I'm talking about movies. I'm talking about comic books. Um, the New 52 was just as much of a screw-up, but financially it was a success yes. because they drew in more people to read the books. Marvel tried to do the same thing, and they wrecked their stories. They wrecked it. And I don't blame Marvel for their annexation of the X-Men and the Fantastic Four, although they're still using Doctor Doom, which I'm very much in support of. It's Doctor Doom. But, like, Thor's a chick? <laughs> I have like, Lady Thor on my shelf. There was literally a point in time in comics, which may have actually happened before the reboot, where none of the... No, it was after the reboot. None of the heroes... Were the heroes. Are the hero. Like, Tony Stark is evil and wearing a white suit. He's the only one who's still there. Captain America is black. He's yes. the Falcon. Yep. 
the Falcon became Captain America. And I, I have no problem with, let me, let me be very upfront and specific about this right now. I have absolutely no problem with Captain America being black. My point is that he's not Steve Rogers. They made Steve Rogers, this is the part that really offends me, they made Steve Rogers a spy for Hydra. Yeah, from the beginning. What the, what the, what I the, want nothing to do with that storyline. You can censor this. What the fuck? What, what? Why would you do that? I mean, that'd be like saying that, that would be like for you, saying that Superman actually works for Zod. Or something like that. You know, he's Brainiac's <laughs> bitch and has been all along. That is offensive. I'm sorry, I just love Captain America. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Iron Man's evil. Captain America is the Falcon, which I love the Falcon, that's fine. But I don't like the way they handled the Steve Rogers aspect of it. Yeah. Um, Thor is a chick. Mm -hmm. And the Hulk is not there slash... He's red and actually Thunderbolt. It's a different person. It's Red Hulk. He's Thunderbolt Ross. Yeah. Who turns into the Red Hulk. Yep. So it's like literally everyone who I care about oh, and Spider Man was Doctor Octopus. Oh, Superior Spider Man, don't get me started. And Wolverine is dead, but no like seriously permanently dead. Which you say that in re relation to comic books and everybody's like, Yeah, right. No, they actually killed Wolverine because they don't want to endorse the X-Men. They don't want to give Fox pre they want free the, they publicity. They want it back. They want it back. So that is why I I subscribe to the, the idea that he's like permanently dead yeah. until Marvel gets the rights back. Which they will. They'll beat down Fo because they, cause Fox I'm can't fine make with that. comic books. They kept the comic book rights. Good. Just not the movie rights. So Marvel can oh, is the only ones that can make the comic books. Fox can't. So they have to keep the movies going or they're going to lose. It's just going to fall to the background. Yeah. And frankly, Marvel should get them back. And, and frankly, the X-Men movies kind of suck. Yeah, they plateaued. We get a few. We get a few. Days of Future Past, great. First Class, I hear, was great. I've yet to watch all the way through. Um, I liked Apocalypse. Logan, Not much. Deadpool. All freaking great movies. Yes. Logan's one of my favorite movies, period, now. But, again. Okay, so I'll uh, go to my... We've been... My well, last I'm, minor well, story. We've, we've been... Uh, uh, but, yeah, my, my point there was uh, the Justice League trailer and the fact that <laughs> we went on a really big tangent there. Yes. But my point was, while I don't... I don't know how to feel about the Justice League trailer, but it doesn't look that bad. I, I hope it's a good movie. It and doesn't I'll... look that bad. I have no... The whole point of that was I have zero faith in DC's ability to make a good crossover film. That being said, it doesn't look that bad. Uh, earlier, I, I interrupted you. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to try to change stories. When you're still making your point, I spaced out. Just wanted to let the audience know that was my bad. No, that was... And also, we completely we got we far enough, tangent. We got far enough away from my topic that we per forgot I had a point. <laughs> <laughs> which which frankly I think we we've set the precedent for that to be the case on the show. Yes. It's like this is an extended discussion. I will say this though. I am glad that they don't have the Green Lantern. They do. Movie. They don't have a Green Lantern movie. There will be a Green Lantern in the Justice League movie. There will be at some point, yes. But I'm saying I'm no, glad. No, that's confirmed. We've had we no, have I, pictures. I, I know. I'm saying we have picture. I don't remember who's the actor. Do I don't know. Actor? I would like to look that up right now. But uh, it's the oh, what's his name? John Stewart. Okay. It's 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 the one I it like I grew up with uh, the Justice League cartoon. So John Stewart is my Green Lantern. Cool. Hal Jordan was mine. Hal Jordan's. I don't know. The the only time I read Green Lantern. It was about Sinestro during the New 52 oh, run. Screw it that. was good. I loved the Green Lantern comic. The ones that really kind of bored me was the Flash comic. Yeah. And uh, frankly, Superman was bored. Superman was god awful to read. Action Comics was mm, Action Comics was really good. It was a little too smart for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Action Comics was great. 
There were a lot of Batman books. There were like four Batman books during the New 52. There's always so many that loop together. Yeah. Okay, so. But yeah, what's your next? Star Wars? That's the way we'll do it. That's the way we'll be clear is going from one topic to the next. We will hand it off. Gotcha. From now on. The baton has been handed to DK. Uh, mine is... Oh, and another thing. <laughs> oh, God. Star Wars Battlefront 2 adjusts the crate system. Uh, You're going to have to dissect all of that statement. For okay, so loot crates. Everybody knows loot crates. Right. You can buy them. You earn them in-game. Well, uh, they originally had it to where there was pay to win. Well, now Battlefront has said that it's now locked against... Uh, all the pay to win is canceled, and all the major star cards that are abilities and uh, stuff like that are now locked behind character progression instead of buying pay to win. Okay. So essentially they're less douchey now. <laughs> they're like, we understand the community is totally flipped. It's lit over this being pay to win. We'll work towards it. And then they did. And now it's before the game even came out. They're like, yeah, it's not pay to win now. Which, so they actually did like they promised. Go figure. Yeah. It's rare, especially for EA. EA, yeah. notorious for this stuff. So are they? Yes, they're notorious. You know, they have it in every game, I think EA, and it's a like, lot of pay to win. They have it in everything. Shadow of War now has loot crates in it. It's single player. Yeah. Why would I pay to win a single player game? Yeah. I'm not playing anyone. No, that that offends me on a very personal level. It's like, I, I really, I cannot in any way get behind a video game where you can pay to win. It is unplayable competitively unless you put more money into it than you paid to get the thing in the first place. Yeah. And the most offensive aspect of that is the content's on the disc. Yeah. You're paying to unlock it on the disc. You're not downloading anything. You're not, you're downloading the ability to unlock it off of the content that's included on the disc. Yep. It's 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 bull honky. And uh the way you get these star cards now that's are why I don't like online games, honestly. You craft don't. you have to craft it now. It has a crafting system, so that's how you do it now. You you play and you play and you play, you get these parts, and then you can craft the cards. Which is great. It's gonna be a lot better than what cards? Yeah, uh, abilities. Uh, essentially you equip cards to your 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 stormtrooper yeah. or your robot or your hero and they have abilities and you can get better abilities by playing more getting parts and crafting the star cards it's really well, cool. that's honestly kind of cool i have zero interest in the new battlefront games i will play battlefront 2 star wars battlefront 1 and 2 the originals for playstation 2 were some of the best games i've ever played especially 2 yes one the first one was very notable for the battle on the platforms where where there is this one bridge. Anyone who's played Battlefront 1, the original for PlayStation 2, who played on the platforms map knows that there is this single bridge on the platforms map where it's just a firefight the whole time. <laughs> That's all it is. You are shooting. It is basically, it becomes a war of attrition. Where you Who can have, last longer? Yeah, it's you have to kill more guys than the other guy, and there are ways around that. You know, platforms is famous for having a lot of ships that you can get inside and then going to the other yep. side of the map and then landing. But yeah, one of the, this one is great because uh, the secondary the second game uh, of the reboot is going to have a story, it. and that's why I'm going to play it. It has a story. It's going to have a story though, this time. Battlefront 1 did not. for the PlayStation 4 bothered me. Yeah, it didn't have a That's story not at all. a game. And it threw me off. That's not a game. That's four maps and no uh, and content that you buy online. Yes. It's like they literally released the beta version of a video game to try and get it out in time before the movie came out. Yeah. That's yeah. and that's that's disgusting. I I view the new Battlefront 1 as the movie tie-in game for The Force Awakens. And movie tie-in games universally suck. Agreed. And I stand by that. I stand by that the first Battlefront game sucks. 
And uh, I pass the baton on to you, Ospin. Well, I did Justice League. Uh, so this will be my last story topic. So there's a Netflix movie coming out starring Will Smith and an orc. Yes. It's called Bright. B-R-I-G-H-T. And it's basically a buddy cop movie that takes place in a world where D&D races exist. And they cohabitate. And magic exists. And it's not straight up takes place in our world, but fairies are a thing. Elves. I think those are supposed to be elves mm -hmm. are a thing. He doesn't look like an elf. <laughs> the guy that they have with the pointy ears that I see in the trailer is like, he doesn't look like an elf. I think the uh, the uh, one with the magic wand has, is an elf. She looks like an elf. She is. Yeah. The other guy looks like a fairy. He could be, he a, could different be a fairy of, or something. He could be a different type of elf. There is a difference. He's too square of a jaw to be an elf. Yeah. But, uh, She's cute, by the way. Very. <laughs> My type. Yeah, mine, mine too. But <laughs> uh, yeah, it's Will Smith as a police officer in a world where the indie races exist. He's paired up with an orc partner, and apparently the movie is going to be about them apprehending an individual. Uh, a white-haired elf girl who has a magic wand that can grant wishes. That is a magical nuke. Yeah, it is uh, the equivalent of... It, it can grant any wish. So mm -hmm. it's like, that's that's the magical equivalent. Really? Speaking as a D&D fan, the wish spell, depending on your DM's opinion on the wish spell, is a WMD. Mm -hmm. It is the... Weapon of mass destruction yes. to all be weapons of mass destruction. Yes, it is the most powerful thing... You can give to your players, and one of the reasons why you should never give wishes to your players. But yeah, it looks like it looks like the uh, the premise of this is Will Smith getting Will Smith and his orc buddy getting this uh, elf, supposedly elf girl, with this magic wand that can grant wishes to a safe location. Yep, they're, they're getting her out of the city. They're trying to save her. <clears throat> or at least put her in witness protection so that people don't kill her to get the wand. Yes, because everybody wants it. But uh, I like Will Smith. Oh, yeah, I love him and everything. I love Will Smith. I haven't seen him in anything in a while besides Suicide Squad. I know he's been up to stuff. It's just nothing that really interests me. He was one of the only things I loved about Suicide Squad. I did not like Suicide Squad I like much. Suicide Squad. I, I do. They cut too much Joker out. And that's where me and you differ. I'm you very like happy. You seductive... I like the Joker. seductive Joker, but I like the take of the Joker who actually cares about Harley. Where, I, whereas what they cut out of the film, the, the thing you're talking about, is the parts that make him be the same Joker that we've seen a million times. Yes, and I love that Joker. I love that Joker too, but I love different... I like the idea that the Joker deconstructs and then reconstructs himself. Which is one of the reasons why when they when they were like, oh, in the New 52, there has actually been three Jokers. Mm -hmm. I'm like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> shut up. It's like, they're, he's a complete psychopath. He can rebuild himself however he wants. That's yeah, exactly. how it works. And that's also how he keeps ahead of Batman. Because he's not a... He's, he's nuts. He can, uh -huh. do, he can break down his entire personality and rebuild it. But yeah, I, I kind of like, there's a story in the New 52 where uh, Joker took over Arkham and he had like a tapestry made of bodies. Wow. It was sewn together people that were still alive with a depiction of he and Batman's history on them. What the hell? There he had he had a horse run by Batman and it was on fire, like a flame, like a uh, like a nightmare. Wow. Get it? Jim, I'm starting to think that was the point of that moment. There was people dressed like the Joker and Batman who were dancing in the cells, but the water there was water on the floor of the cells that was 
if they stopped dancing, it would electrocute them to death. What the hell, and man? And then at the end of the story, Joker... Honestly, you think he capture he captures Alfred and brainwashes him, but you think... Because Joker's going to feed the... He captures the whole Bat family, and he's going to feed them something. Oh. You think he's going to feed them Alfred. Okay. It's their faces. It's their faces. This is a very famous story, so I don't feel like I'm spoiling too much. He cut, he cuts off everyone's face and puts it on a plate in front of them and tries to get them to eat it because the way the story starts is Joker has cut off his own face. And sewed it back on, right? He, you know, he's just wearing it like a mask now. It's horrifying. That's... It's not actually their faces. I forget the justification for how that worked. He didn't actually cut off their faces. But the the version of the Joker who... The, the way that story kind of ends is Batman is talking about how he's the world's greatest detective and he can tell what someone is feeling emotionally just by the way their pupils move in yeah. their eyes. And he says that... Um, he looks into the Joker's eyes and consistently he sees, when the Joker looks at him, he sees his pupils are indicating that the Joker loves him. Wow. And, first of all, <laughs> Yeah, creepy! But that, being, that being said, it's not the first time that the Joker and Batman have kind of had this really weird, like, Arkham City touches on it too toward the end. It's yes. like they have the kind of this really weird border, borderline like homosexual thing going on where and I, I love that. I think it's kind of I think it's kind of beautiful for, for a hero and his arch nemesis to have that much not necessarily chemistry but to be as to be connected on that type of level, it's it's touched on in the Lego Batman movie, too. It's much more <laughs> lighthearted, but the Lego Batman movie is almost a romance between the Joker. It's almost like a breakup movie between the Joker and Batman. That's where, exactly what it is. Where at the end, Batman's like, you need, I need you. And it's like, you are, the Lego movie did it on purpose. But like you said earlier, the seductive Joker. Yes. The Joker who almost loves Batman. Those are my favorite versions of the Joker. Fair enough, fair enough. And the Joker in Suicide Squad, he's more... He's independent of Batman. He doesn't need Batman. He's a crime boss. He doesn't need Batman. Which is new. I, I like to see that, but they still touch on... like the, the moment where the Joker walks in, sits in the dude's lap and purrs in his face... I'm like that's that's kind of that's kind of great. I love that. <laughs> I love that more of that, please. <laughs> I I I. Do you like... have something to tell me, Ozpin? No, I don't. <laughs> Am I gay for the Joker? Maybe. No, I'm not. <laughs> um, to be clear, I am completely straight. Ninety percent straight. But that being said, I like sed the seductive Joker, like you said. And Suicide Squad does the best at portraying that because the other versions of the Joker we've seen are the Heath Ledger Joker. And I'm glad that while people have reacted to the Suicide Squad Joker in a kind of negative way, we're getting different versions of the Joker. Like Heath Ledger didn't... Okay, this is the best Joker, but it's not cementing the versions of the Joker we're getting. We get different ones still. I'm yes. happy for that. Because his, his performance was so legendary that we could be not getting anything but that for the rest of any Ever. Batman movie we get. But he's changed. Yeah. Still. So, yeah. Uh, Time for my bright. story? Bright, <laughs> I, yes. We weren't even talking. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, bright. I'm not sure how I got onto Suicide Squad from Bright. Will but Smith. Will Smith, yes. Thank you. <laughs> I, I, I completely forgot. 
why. But yeah, uh, I love Will Smith. He hasn't been in a lot, which is exactly what I said a minute ago. Yes. But it's going to be good. Bright. Looks kind of awesome. I'm passing the baton. Okay, so my main story is is a bit of my childhood. It is my absolutely favorite thing of when I was a kid. And it's not really a big story so much as... If you love Rugrats, they have made yeah. the Reptar cereal and candy bar. You can go to FYE. Wait, like in real life? Yes. Okay. Is this like the Scooby Snacks thing? No, it's actual cereal and candy. A Scooby Snacks are a real thing. Yeah, but... For dogs and for people. Oh, God. <laughs> I didn't know that. But they made Reptar cereal uh, from FYE which is a store, and they also have the candy bars. Now, they're expensive. For a 12.25-ounce cereal, uh, a box of cereal, it's twelve ninety nine. No, I'm good. And for I'm a good. single candy bar, $13.34. I kind of want to go to the store now and get, like, some Boo Berry. Oh, God. You know, I've never tried any of those Count Chocula spinoff cereals. I've never tried Count Chocula. We're talking about Sir <laughs> Piss off. He's doing this, rain it in. He's doing this symbol with his hands, like, rain it in, Ozpin. And I'm like, I'm trying to rain in I'm my... talking about cereal. I'm trying to rain in myself from smacking you. <laughs> so, for 24, you're going to pay $69.99. For, for 24? Candy bars. $69.99? Yes, for 24 candy bars. I'm doing this math. That is $13.34 each candy bar. No. No. How big are they? They're relatively big, actually. They're, uh... They're are are they the size of a Snickers? Like, bigger. What are, we, what are we talking? We're talking about... Snickers is about like this. We're talking okay, about one of the one. big, big bars of Hershey's. That's not bad. Because I've gotten... I've gotten the Reese's candy. That's like a big candy bar, and that was $2. It's essentially that. Okay. But for thirteen dollars, and it's more for nostalgia, and it's black on the outside because it's chocolate, green on the inside because reptar. Okay. Uh, it's just I, why I, wouldn't it just? I be love the green? Rugrats. I love the Rugrats, uh, the Rugrats because in the show it was a candy bar. Oh, it actually looked like that in the show. Okay, yes. that's kind of cool then. And uh, I am happy for that, and I pass the baton on you because I just wanted to share how. Gloriously awesome that is. Yeah, the nostalgia for stuff again, that makes me Im immediately think of the Count Chocula spin-off cereals and how they bring that back all the time. And I think they're doing a thing with uh what's it called? Liquid cooler. It's it's a Ghostbusters drink. I have no clue. It, like Slimer is the mascot for it, but they oh, bring yeah. they bring it back every once in a while. Uh I think it was liquid cooler or something like that. But um, that's cool. You know, nostalgia. Go to FYE if you like the Rugrats and get yourself a candy bar. It's going to cost you thirteen thirty four, but hey. That's that's really kind of too much money for candy. <laughs> it's a one-off. I'm, I'm saying that on Halloween night, that's too much money for candy. <laughs> you know how big bag of candy I can get for that? <laughs> you can get a big bag of like Reese's and Snickers for 10 bucks. Exactly. That's this big. He holds, as he was in the podcast, he holds up a measurement in his hands. <laughs> the size of a bag of, oh, a, a bag of cereal. The, you know, the big bag. It's like, it, it has certainly more in it than a thing of cereal. Yes. Okay, so Baton's patched to you. Okay, uh, my top story is Ruby Volume 5 getting started. Oh, God. Uh, we've had two episodes released. I actually cannot watch this series because the art gives me anxiety. I My plan right now is to get you drunk and make you watch it with me. <laughs> <laughs> if it works, it works. That's a fun... That, that's a joke, but DK's the one that suggested that. So, whatever gets you there. you, <laughs> <laughs> my wife... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, Ruby Volume 5 is dropped. To be clear, I am straight. About 85% straight. I, straight. Like, I like the fact that we have both felt the need to clarify that we're straight on this podcast. <laughs> who cares? With, within like 10 minutes of each other, at least. Uh, who cares? 
<laughs> it doesn't really matter these days. But yes, Ruby Volume 5, uh, we're two episodes in. Uh, I'm loving it. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm hesitant to, to, I'm hesitant to talk about it, because I love Ruby. And you don't want to spoil it, especially since I you're trying to try to get me to watch it. Yeah, I want you to watch it, and I don't want to spoil it for the listeners, because if you haven't watched Ruby, it's listeners, on Rooster Teeth, right? it's on YouTube. All of it is on YouTube. The channel is Rooster Teeth, right? Yes. Rooster Teeth produces it. Uh, funnily enough, they are located here in Texas. If you have not watched Ruby, R-W-B-Y, go to YouTube, find Volume 1, watch it, bear with the animation, because it's not, it's certainly not great, it, it starting gets, out. It gets better, and the new art is what bugs me. Season s volumes, 1 through 3, the art consistently improves. Seasons th Between seasons 3 and 4, volumes 3 and 4, the art takes this gigantic leap. And between volumes four and five, five is the one that's airing right now, it looks comparable to the Clone Wars CG series. Okay. The 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 animation is impeccable. I'm so proud of Rooster Teeth for for getting we, it to where it was. Yes. They they have made phenomenal progress. But that being said, I have had DK watch Ruby Chibi, and, and I love it. He loves Ruby Chibi, so we had the discussion of. I honestly think Ruby Chibi's animation is better. Yes, it is. I can handle the, it than the normal Ruby animation. And I've had people jump down my throat about that. It's like that, really? Because Ruby looks so good, and I'm like, you're saying that because you want to think Ruby's animation is great. It's not. There are better CG shows, but Volume 4 and 5 look phenomenal. They do look really good. I just, for some reason, can't handle that type of art. Yes, it's kind of jerky. Yes. It's going to be worse when we watch the uh, the older stuff in the animation. I've watched the older stuff. It did not bug me anxiety-wise. There are moments that bugged me anxiety-wise. Like, there, there's a scene... In Volume 2, where they're throwing a party and they're wearing dresses and high heels, <laughs> and the animation with them walking in the high heels does not work. <laughs> so they're like, duh, uh, bleh, duh, uh, bleh. It, the way they move, <laughs> it's like... Broken it, gears. It's it's like a monster... <laughs> Limping towards it. Yeah, them. a little bit. It, does, it, it doesn't work. God bless them, but it doesn't work. Uh, so far, Ruby Volume 5 has been great. Okay. Uh, I'm only two episodes in. I will continue. There's only to... two episodes out. Yeah, that's what I'm. That's what I mean. Okay. Uh, there's only two episodes released right now, but I will continue to update everybody as that continues to let you know if Ruby's going to stop being awesome. For a lot of people, that was a few years ago when Ruby stopped being awesome. Uh, a lot of people just have a problem with the fact that Ruby sets up all this stuff and doesn't pay it off. Okay. That's that's how a lot of people feel. But I feel like the setups are all... It's all still building to something. Okay. And given how many years the show's been going, they've had the opportunity to consider it. They also went through a rough patch with the creator dying. Yes, they lost Monty Ohm. Monty Ohm actually had years worth of the show already plotted out. Yes. But unlike... Uh, some creators who, when they die, you lose all of the information. He wrote it down. He wrote it down, and other people knew about it. So they continued the show. You know, it's in his honor, and yeah. frankly, it looks great. I think he'd be proud. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, Ruby Volume 5. Uh, now we're going to go ahead and move on to some listener questions. Okay. Okay, so first listener question, and uh, again, as sad as it is, these uh, these listener questions were written and submitted to us by our friends. Yes. Because the, the channel has not quite taken off yet, but we still want to have placeholders for this section of the podcast. And I do have candy. Candy! I'm going to eat some. Give me one of those Twix. 
Kit Kats. They're Kit Kats. Kit Kats. Doesn't even know what a Kit Kat care. is. I don't care. I eat Reese's Pieces, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah. Uh, first listener submitted question. Um, having to per- It pertains to D&D. What are some of the accessories you carry with you to your D&D games, and what are some of the other accessories that you've used as a dungeon master at the table or when creating your characters? Uh, Do you want to start or should I? I mean, I can start by mentioning the obvious one, which is dice. <laughs> Lots of dice. Too much dice? No more dice than that. <laughs> uh, you can never have... Too many. I'm going to be honest. Speaking as someone who has not had to buy the 5th edition handbooks, because I can't afford them, when I started playing 4th edition, the only thing that I bought was the first player's handbook for $40, a set of D6s for about $9, and a set of gold and white dice okay. for about $9 as well. So I probably spent about $60 in total to get into 4th edition gameplay. It is the best $60 I've ever spent because you don't honestly need a lot there's a lot of online resources now some of which you have to pay for some of which you don't but you don't have to necessarily have the handbook or at least your own copy of the handbook i certainly recommend having a handbook there for the group for the group at least one handbook and frankly the player's handbook for fifth edition is about 50 bucks if not more I don't know the exact price. Everybody if, can chip in ten dollars. If you're if in a group, people. everybody can pitch in a little bit of money, and then you can buy a handbook for the group. Let the dungeon master hold on to it. You if, know, if the group disbands, the dungeon master gets it because he was the one running. He was running the game. Frankly, he should get to keep the book, yeah. in my opinion. Yes, but it is a cheap hobby. Is my point. Yes, Dungeons and Dragons. I, I spent $60 to buy a $40 handbook and two sets of dice, one of which I did not need. Yeah. The D6s I did not need except for character creation. They can come in handy if you're dungeon mastering a game. It's not a bad idea to have a set of D6s. I think you get like 12 of them in one of the little... Yes. You get 12 D6s. Oh, wow. That's enough for three players to roll their characters. At once. Stats at the same time. Uh, but it's the best money I ever spent because... The handbook and those two sets of dice held me over for like seven years of gameplay. Yeah. (laughs) I did not need anything else but that. I bought the red box and I didn't buy anything else. Mm -hmm. Well, no, I bought tiles when I was DMing. Uh, Oh, yeah, you got that box of tiles. I have, uh, I have, right now I have, I'll talk about what I bring to my D&D stuff. I I bought boxes of dungeon tiles and forest tiles. Mm -hmm. And, uh. That's I bought twenty nine ninety nine for the uh, red box, the beginner box. Even though I was not a beginner, uh, I've been playing since advanced. Uh, red box is not a bad thing to buy. Yes. starting out. Period. Or just whenever a new one comes out. Now it's a black box, but I've been playing. Really? Yeah, it's black in fifth edition. Huh. Uh, but I I've been playing since second edition advanced D and D, which cool. is broken. Uh, Apparently. <laughs> but uh. So that's what you, uh, and then I bought two boxes of tiles each, $30 each. Yeah, but my point, my point is that the books are expensive now. If you buy a book for your group, that's $10 per person. $20 at most if everyone buys their own sets of dice. It's not as and, expensive and as you think it is to get into. There's, dices can be used in any edition. Dice can be used in any edition. Yes. So once you buy a dice, you don't have to buy it for a new edition. A set of gaming dice is, uh, a set of gaming dice is universal. That being said, my whole, my whole setup for that is the hobby is, for me at least, has been cheap Too as bad. dirt. The hobby has been so cheap. So I buy dice. Yes. I have like 14 sets of dice. <laughs> oh, God. That's Damn. a lot. They're, they're like $10 a piece because I won't buy the cheap dice. I have seven. <laughs> I've been playing for, what, nine years? 
The whole time we've known each other. Yes. Uh, we've known, Well, I was playing a little before we knew yes. each other. So you've been playing um, seven Path- plus about two years. So I played years. I played Pathfinder like three years before I met you. You've so, been playing about ten years then. We've known each other for seven years. Yeah, about, about ten years worth of gameplay. I don't see myself ever stopping. Me either. That being said, when you don't have easy access to D and D minis, which for fourth edition we didn't. Uh, if you wanted miniatures, you'd have to get like the metal ones, or the white ones from Reaper. Yeah. All both of which you would have to paint yourself if you want them painted. Oh, excuse me. Miniatures from at least from Wizards were not an issue. So you weren't going out and spending your money to get minis. Yes. The only other thing that I could get was dice. So you got dice. So I got dice. Every couple of months I'd buy a new set of dice and I have 13 14 sets of dice. I'll probably still buy some more. But that being said, dice, I'm very, very proud of my dice collection. And I'm very proud of the fact that I've never lost any of my dice. There you go. But because the hobby is so cheap, I could afford to get a set of dice every once in a while. And, yeah. Dice. Then some more dice. Then more dice than that. That's what I've had. <laughs> okay, so for what I've had, I've had a my boxes of tiles to build maps. I bought a uh, uh, a fold out mat mm-hmm. uh, to where you can draw and erase on. Uh, I have a pretty decent sized one, a twenty four by thirty two. That's a big one. Uh, I bring a tubware when I DM with uh, about ten to fifteen folders in it of custom classes. That have either gone off uh, line, wikis. Um, I don't publish it. I don't say they're mine, but I use them, and then it's on yeah, uh, open fan, source. They're homebrew fan classes. Yes. from I think they're like from Roll Twenty and Dandy Wiki for, for anyone to use. Yeah, I have those. That's my my game. The game I'm going to DM. Uh, my group's going to be using those classes instead of anything else. Yeah, if you're interested in fan classes, they are all over the internet. My go-to. I've brought it up many times on this podcast. Is Middle Finger of Vecna. Uh, because they are all reskins of existing things, so they're more or less guaranteed to not be broken. Too broken. Yes. But there are some slightly less balanced things on wikis like Roll Twenty, D and D Wiki. There, there are there are a lot of D and D wikis out there, and they're they're not all necessarily accurate. Yes, not necessarily at all. Yeah. Uh, one of the major things I just bought recently was a very expensive card holding. It uh, holds a, 420 cards. He's holding it right now. Yes, I have a little not, spell book, people. Not in his lap. He's holding it up against his chest like an excited schoolgirl. <laughs> I have a literal spell book. It's nice. It's the, the leather is It's a very nice binder. I bought Z Folio LX, and then I had bought uh, Wizards of the Coast, D- Dungeons & Dragons, uh, Arcane card set. Yeah, it is. Which has 200 plus spell cards from Sorcerer, Warlock, and Wizard. Yep. And I'm going to expand it with Cleric and Ranger and Druid. I'm going to have a literal spell book that has all the spells, and it, they have cards that you can create your own spells. Because when you're DMing or you have your you have a DM, you can make spells. That's a thing. You you have to be in tandem with your. DM. Yes, you have, have to, to clear it with your DM. You can't just say, I created this spell and it now works. Yeah. There is nothing like that. You you talk to your DMs like, hey, I want to develop this spell, roll some checks, then you have a new spell. Some DMs won't go for it. I, as a DM, will not go for that. And like, in my game, my in... whole thing's about creating and adjusting and modification. Yes, your, yours is very, very open. Uh, collaborative between players. Yes, and that because that's the type of game I like. Mm-hmm. Uh, because in mine, there's five... You can alter a spell five times. It gets progressively harder and expensive to do so. But you can make a fireball, go have ongoing damage, or a certain type of burst damage. Yeah. You sit down with your player and you spend money and ability rolls to in- improve the spell... And, and collaborate with the player as to what exactly the spell does after it's improved. So you, yes. you can add, like, it's a fireball, but now it does electrical damage. 
Yeah. And maybe the zone is cr- increased. Or you're casting sleep. Why don't he, now that it, it does a level of exhaustion instead of puts them to sleep? It's so bad. They just, for some reason, feel more tired and exhausted instead of putting them to sleep. Or it can do both. Or you can make someone then confused and start attacking each other. That's pretty good. It's like I, I cast sleep on you. When you wake up, you have a level of exhaustion. Yes. It's like you're still doped up. Yeah. <laughs> and if you do that to people that are asleep, you could put it uh, exhaustion. If you level it up, it could be exhausted and confused. So you're, and then level three, exhausted, confused, weakened. Oh lord! They're attacking their allies. They're weak. They're doing half damage, uh, and they're so exhausted they have penalties. Mm-hmm. If you do that for a barrack of sleeping uh, bad guys... It's very expensive to get to the point you're talking about. But It's not as expensive as in... I think it's it more should expensive be. for the higher the level of the spell. Speaking as a DM, I think it should be expensive and difficult. The difficult <laughs> part is finding someone that can make it to the next level. That can train you. Fair enough. It's not that the... It's expensive, so it's the training's expensive. That also gives you the power as a DM to not let them increase their spells until you're... Prepared. Until you're ready for them to and it do limit, that, it limits it. And, and then you can introduce the NPC that does that. And they don't even know that you're limiting them. It could be just that you originally had them have it had a spellcaster designed where they can make a level three spell, and he's not there anymore. Yeah, and it's it's just really cool. But uh, that's that's what I bring. I bring uh, custom classes, uh, minis, uh, my yeah, literal man, my literal spell book. I am so proud of this. I bought this off a of whim. Yeah, and let's, I, let me. I, I'm going to describe this really quick for you. It's it is a large leather uh, leather trading card holder. Not fake leather. Listen leather. That. Doesn't that just make you all tingly in uh, the pants? <laughs> no. <laughs> it does me. <laughs> it is a actually. It's it's bigger. It has every spell from it's, level one to nine of every, it, of all three classes. It is a four card across three card vertical. Yes, as a as opposed to three by three, which most trading card binders are. Yes, so you, I, I you got a bigger a one on purpose. Significantly larger number of cards. It went from three twenty to I think like four or something. I'm not sure. It's a but lot. He, but he bought all of the spells for wizard, warlock, and sorcerer. And this binder is only about half full. Yes, I'm going to put the other three in it. It's right at half full, and he's gonna. You're gonna get. To be clear, these are decks of cards that were released by wizards, usually pertaining to specific classes. You can buy each of these as separate yes, classes. individual. Um, that each card has a spell on it from that class's spell list. From one through, from level one through nine, and in, in the cantrips. So this, first of all, this is something you will have forever. Yes, I will never get rid of it. Uh, I'm kind of jealous. <laughs> Be jealous. I like I like spell casting. It cost me about fifty bucks, forty seven dollars. I'm not change. that jealous anymore. <laughs> but that's with the that's binder. That's not bad. That's not bad for the cards. How much was this binder? It together with the cards and the binder is forty seven dollars. That's not so bad. Not bad at all. Just the sound. Oh, stop! Yeah. Stop! Don't get it on me. <laughs> <laughs> Down. Down, DK. Bad. Bad decay. Anyway, uh, yeah, I love that. That's a, he's he's gonna take that to our Saturday game and show it off. So and then I went to Wish, which is the best store you can find if you want uh, cheap stuff, not cheaply made, but like uh, this thread was missed or this part was added later or was refurbished. Mm-hmm. I got a dice bag. Oh, is that where you got that? Dice the bag? velvet dice bag for get this. Free with shipping. Shipping was a dollar. You suck. It took me. It took a month to get here. That's the thing. If you buy from Wish, it takes a while to get to you, but it's dirt cheap. I will buy you a, a, a velvet dice bag today. I would like that. That would be really cool. I'd appreciate that, dude. It, it there. It's free with shipping. It's a dollar. Don't worry about it. I have a dollar. <laughs> don't worry about it. It's but yeah. It's uh. I don't have any nice dice bags. <laughs> Well, you will know. D- DK knows I don't have any really nice dice bags. Uh, I have a large set of foam dice that someone gave me for Christmas last year so that I would have dice to throw at my players when I'm DMing. 
that wouldn't hurt them. <laughs> but it would still like give me the satisfaction of I'm gonna throw, hitting them. I'm going to throw the, this foam D4 at you as hard as I can, and hopefully a corner is going to hit you in the eye or something. <laughs> no, I don't have a habit of throwing dice at my players, but... Don't let him lie to you people. <laughs> he is a dictator. This is a dictatorship. Oh, God. But, yeah. Uh, I, mean, think... I always loved that picture of uh, Dungeon Master where it's uh, the way the Dungeon Master pictures himself. And it's this dark overlord with a goblet of blood sitting on a throne of corpses with a hood up. And then the way the players picture the Dungeon Master. And it's Homer Simpson drunk and passed out on the couch in his underwear. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, pretty much. Pretty yeah. much. You always think you're bigger and better than you are until your whole squad just destroys your game. Let's see. We've covered dice. We've covered maps. maps. We've covered maps. Um, Classes. Dry erase markers and a dry erase board to help keep track of initiative order and other notes. Okay, so here's a secret that not a lot of people know. Use hand sanitizer. Uh, the stuff to, that you yes. sanitize your hands with. Yes. The mat cleans so instantly. It doesn't matter if it's stuck on there, uh, soaked into it. Use that, and it will get it off. I still period. remember when we figured out that trick because we. I was the one in charge of drawing the maps yes. for the Saturday game when we figured that out, and I'm like, we don't have any, uh, we don't have any water, and I don't want to go downstairs. So I just kind of, we had a magic eraser, and certainly. Get some magic erasers. If you're going to draw on your maps, get some magic erasers. And just as a setup for advice, don't erase them when you're done. Don't leave your drawings on your maps because they will not come off and you will stain your map. I know rubbing alcohol, I think rubbing alcohol will get helps. it completely off. Rubbing alcohol will it, if, clean it. If you use a, uh, if you use a hand almost, sanitizer with a magic eraser, it will get anything off. Yeah. Yeah, that will that will do found. it. We found out that just, if it's on there for a month, if you use hand sanitizer, uh, the stuff that squirts out in a bottle, Germex, y'all, Germex with a magic eraser, it will get anything off. Pretty much. Uh, and I love when I figured. I'm like, we don't have any water. Squirt, squirt. And I just like this works really well. Yeah, I <laughs> I keep some at my site all the time. I have one. I'm looking at it. I am in my room. I am looking at it. I don't use it other than when I DM. Germex, yeah. Yeah. I but probably yeah. should use it when I'm sick. Uh, <laughs> Magic Eraser. Uh, Germex. And Germex is just a good thing to have if everybody's handling each other's stuff. You can get off-brand, too. You certainly don't have to have Germex, but it and has, as we have found, it has multiple uses. Uh, you don't need a lot. Especially for cleaning. What are those? Vinyl? Are they made of vinyl, the maps? Yes, I think so. Vinyl maps, they're very good for cleaning that off. Also, you can probably clean them with rubbing alcohol but i try it, it can first. damage the mat that's what i was gonna say i've never actually tried that it can damage the mat if you use it too much okay that's good to know because i did not know that but i suspected uh the lines on the that's inked onto the vinyl it'll come off from the alcohol it can it can dissolve it okay good to know so to know. use it with caution people it'll get it'll clean it but it'll clean it too well that's like a thing you want to do to it once a year and don't let it soak maybe Maybe once a year. Yeah, just if it gets stained to a point. If after it's to where everything's few black years, few now, years even, few yeah. years even. Yeah, that work. Okay, so what is uh? uh what else do we have? We listener have... question number two. Well, we covered. We covered DM. Uh, we, covered, we covered we covered supplies. dice maps. Uh, I recommend a dry erase board to keep track of initiative, as well as like magnets. Yes. With your players' names on them. So you can move them around. So that you can move them around for uh, for an indicator of initiative. Um, what else? We, we sort of covered minis. If you want minis, uh, you can even order them offline now. Hero we, Forge. We actually, me and DK actually have Hero Forge. Premium minis coming. Pre premium plastic minis on the way. Uh, I'm going to get bronze soon. I, have the money. I would love to get bronze one day, but I don't. Hundred bucks. I don't see myself a ever, lot. ever spending money on that. Uh, mine is Muska, my Monday Night Warlock that I've already spoken about tonight. Yep. Mine's uh, going to be Tiberius Bell. And that's his character for my upcoming Saturday game. Yes, sir. 
Um, but you can get Reaper minis, any game store. If you're worried about where to find dice and miniatures and maps, any game store, comic book store. And comic book stores are kind of my go-to. But there are gaming stores. They're few and far between, but they're out there. Um, character sheets, physical character sheets. I speak from experience. Uh, players having nothing but digital character sheets is annoying. It just is. Yes, very much so. Physical character sheets. It just it, it it's it's comforting for a DM to be like, can I see your character sheet? And not have to wait for you to email it to them and then open the email or whatever the heck other process you have or to do. Or they go hand through. you their phone. Yeah, that's really annoying. It's like I don't want to have your phone. I don't know how to work your phone. <laughs> um I think that covers most of it. Yeah, that, that covers a good chunk of it. I mean, I always have notebooks and pencils to take notes. Yes. Uh, taking notes is always a very uh, important process. What else do I carry? Dice cups. You can carry dice cups slash dice trays. Dice towers. Dice towers are fun. I have not ever found a place where I can buy a dice tower, but I'd, I'd love a dice tower. Uh, They're mostly on like... And again, you know, you can get handbooks for your group. I think that more or less covers some of the more immediate accessories. Yes, very much so. So we will go ahead and move on to our second listener question. This one's kind of a... Uh, it's pertaining to video games. It's kind of a more retro question. Uh, what was your first video game console, and what were some of your favorite video games for that console? You want to start? Mine was a Sega Genesis. I have no experience with the Sega Genesis. It's essentially Sonic. Sonic the Hedgehog. Sonic, Sonic, and more Sonic? Uh, essentially. Is it yeah. like Dice, Dice, and more Dice? No. Uh, Sonic may- the Hedgehog has several games on it. It's really good. Uh, my favorite was Sonic 2 with Tails. Uh, it was my first video game console. Uh, it's what got me into video games. I've been playing it since I was two. Uh, my favorite game on there is Phantom 2040. The guy in a purple latex suit, but he is a what? he is a grappling hook. You can grapple to walls and stay there and shoot. And in this game, you could hold grapple to a wall and then aim your gun and shoot at enemies coming at you. And it was a it was platformer. Okay. And it was just one of these games that I had the ring. I had the Phantom Ring. It's a skull. Okay. They made a movie. I had the movie ring. It was my favorite video game for so oh, long. Oh, you had like a prop level thing. No, it was, yeah, it was higher than prop level. It was steel, stainless steel, colored aged steel. Uh, it had gymmed eyes. It was just so nice. And I lost it swinging my head, my hand when I was a kid. And I spent hours trying to find it. Never did. That sucks. And then my last game that I have a very fond memory of is... I'd have to say Vectorman. It's this guy I'm made out of lie. green balls. I'm, why? <laughs> it, it, he is quite literally a, a, a bunch of green balls stuck to each other. And he moved. And you would shoot. It was a, uh, it was a very weird platformer. And you would have to fight bosses in the end. By uh, he basically shot his own balls out. He didn't lose any, but he just <laughs> shot them. And it was just such a fun game. That's that's my first game system in games. I'm not gonna lie. Half of the things you just said are kind of Greek to me. Yes, I've never heard of any. I've heard of the Sega Genesis, of course, but I've never heard of any of that. <laughs> but it, eh, eh. I'm not sure. I'm meh. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, mine, mine was a little bit more of a uh, a common one. It's obviously the Nintendo 64. Uh, certainly my first exposure to video games was when I went over to my friend's house and they had the Nintendo 64 and we played Star Fox. So, so naturally, uh, when I finally did manage to talk my dad into taking me to a pawn shop and buying a used Nintendo 64... I was not a very rich child, people. Uh, 
the games that I got for it were Ocarina of Time, you know, The Legend of Zelda, Mario, 64. I, Mario 6, Super Mario 64, obviously. Uh, Majora's Mask, Legend of Zelda. That creeped me out. And, of course, Star Fox. So, right up front, not only was Nintendo 64 my first game console, but Star Fox 64 was the first video game I ever played. After that, so, so, so I, I loved playing Star Fox 64, even though it took me years to beat it, because I don't know when those games were released, but I was born in the very, very, very early 90s. So I was really young when those games were out. And as little kids were prone to do back then, I had trouble playing and beating the game. So I didn't actually beat Star Fox 64 until years after the fact. Uh, but of course, uh, Ocarina of Time was and probably still is my favorite video game. It's It just feels quintessentially like a, the, it's like the video game yes. to me, you know? When I think video game, I think Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time for the Nintendo 64. Period. I had Majora's Mask, but Majora's Mask was... I could not figure it out. But again, I was a little kid. I could not figure out how to make things loop. Completely understandable. So I I never got very far in Majora's Mask. But that's that's okay because it... I don't feel like it almost feels like the difficulty for Ocarina of Time carried over into Majora's Mask. Very like much. It continued so. to scale. Like oh, Ocarina, it was, it was Ocarina of Time got really hard at the end. And then Majora's Mask continued that level of difficulty over into its own game. Very much so. Uh oh well, let's see. What else did I like for, for that console? Played the Power Rangers game for it. There was a Batman Beyond game for it. I'm not saying these were my favorite games. They're just some of the games that I had for it. Uh, I remember playing Superman 64 and then immediately taking it back and returning it. Yes. <laughs> Boy's man. Boy's man. That's a, I actually, like, again, I was little. And I'm like... I, I think I walked up to my dad and I was like, this game doesn't work. <laughs> I, need to, I need to return this to GameStop. It works, just not well. Nope, nope. It works exactly the way it's supposed to work. Exactly. <laughs> and that is not at all. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it is atrocious. I loved Mega Man 64. That was pretty fun, even though the... the uh, the, it sounded like it was recorded in a bathroom, the audio for it. It probably was. It was absolutely <laughs> terrible. Um, I played the Army Man games. I loved those. Oh, my friend. Okay, so Donkey Kong 64 was my favorite all-time game to play with my friends. That in uh, 007. When I bought a new uh, Nintendo 64, I bought the Donkey Kong game just for you. Remember that? Yes, and I never got well, to play it. You and your sister. I never got to play it. I think I think your sister played it. Oh, she, I, just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love it. Yeah. Ooh, I miss it. Mario 64 was great, although I never really got very far in it. Uh, you think that covers our games? Yeah, that's that's of note. The things of note. Okay, so... Star, Star Fox probably remains... Star Fox 64? Like, yeah. That, that quintessential. Kind of, it, it's quintessential, and Legend of Zelda is still my favorite game. Yes. Can't go without. If you have a 64, play it. Yep. Well, there was a really good Star Wars game, too. Yeah. Um, um, I wasn't a big fan of I that don't, one. I don't remember the name. It was The, the cover was a Stormtrooper. Yeah, I wasn't a big fan of Star Wars at that point yet. I, I watched the first original three when I was like seven, and I haven't seen them since. 
Yeah. Well, I mean, while well, I have seen them, I mean, I haven't played a game of Star Wars until, like, PlayStation 1. And uh, I loved it. I remember playing Conqueror's Bad, Bad Fur Day at someone's house. The and that was, that was like, holy, cr- I can't believe what I'm watching. Like, because, again, I was little. I had no frame of reference for what was allowed and seeing something like that. You know, like for the longest time. Saving Private Ryan with uh, squirrels. For the longest time, I thought it was Con- Conker's Bad for Day. Not Bad for Day, <laughs> Bad for Day. I thought it was just a made up word for the longest time. I didn't know the game. Just a little bit of embarrassing tidbit of DK. <laughs> Conker Bad for Day. Thought it was one word. Oh, there was that damn game! Oh. Uh, what the hell was it called? Oh, shoot. It was a puzzle game that took place. Oh. Bomberman? I, I, no. It was a puzzle game that took place in a medieval castle where you like had to you had to work your way through. Uh, yes, I know it, but I can't think of I it. I had such, such a rivalry going with that. Oh, my God. Because, all right, here's, here's what happened. I went out. I bought the game. I played the game. Did not get very far in the game. You can see a trend developing here. But that was not for lack of trying. Oh, God, <laughs> did I try. This was this was one of the hardest games I have ever played. To the point that when I bought a new N64 as an adult, I bought the game again because I had this personal vendetta against I'm it. I'm going to beat you. I'm going to beat this goddamn thing. And I didn't. I, th- I, I didn't get any farther than the first time. <laughs> uh, I see oh, trends. Son of a bitch. I see trends. I see trends. Thank you. Know. Yes. Um, this is going to be interesting. Let's play. Oh, the. Uh, <laughs> I would be down. Like, we are already planning to get a capture card. Yes. Uh, if it works for the N64, I'm down. Components would work. We- Yet, it gave me hell. Because I would love to see if anyone else could, uh, if you could help me figure this out. I bet I could. But yeah, I don't... I'm trying to remember the name, and I just... I ain't got it. But... But yeah, I think we can go ahead and move into the main topic, which is... Anime Heartstrings. Yeah. Uh, they pull at you. Yes, they do. Uh, and we love anime here at Nerddom. But specifically, we are going to be talking about animes that really got to, you. got to us emotionally. And it doesn't necessarily mean Bad. positive emotions. It doesn't necessarily mean negative emotions. It just means the animes that affected you the most. And I think we both have several. I have that immediately two. come to mind. I have two that I want to talk about. I have three or four. So, <clears throat> Well, do you mind if I go first? Go ahead. We, we, you do one, I'll do one. You do one, I'll do one. And, and then you do more. <laughs> either I'll do more, or we will continue the conversation fluidly, and just I'll bring them up okay. in conversation. My first that, one, that's, that's one thing we, we probably need to be doing from now on, is you do one, I'll do one. You do one, I'll do one. Because we didn't do that with what we've been up to, so I wound up just talking nonstop for like 30 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> so the first one I got is Agami... SS. I've seen part of this with you. It is 26 episodes long. Each girl, there are multiple girls, have four episodes each. It's in a multi a multi-reality universe where each time you see them progress with another girl, it is a different timeline. Uh, different things have happened. Uh, different courses have happened. Things change. Uh, but I find myself in each one emotionally invested in the couple. Yeah. And it really gets to me. I'm a big romance guy. Romance is yeah. my favorite genre. Me too. And Agami SS is one of the best romances I've ever seen. Not because he... It's not a harem. He doesn't no, it's end not. Up it's it's alternate all realities, it's, right? It's, it's alternate realities, each a different timeline. Things are even different in each timeline. But I it's, find myself being invested in each and every individual girl. Is it based off a gal game? Uh, I it's believe based so. Off, okay, so then it's both the ones I uh, say talking about are but based then it's, off the gal it's game. probably a straight adaption then yes. of the gal where where 
here's what would happen if he wanted to be with her. Yes. And here's what would happen if he wanted to be with her. Lucky, yes. lucky bastard. <laughs> that he had an option to be with five to six girls. Doesn't yes. it take place during Christmas? Uh, most of them, not all of them. They're having a Christmas festival. So in most of them, it is then in most of them. Uh, the last one, it's, she's a one episoder. She is a stalker. And I didn't get to see that one. <laughs> and he ends up with her in that in that timeline. And it doesn't go to the Christmas, but it is even the stalker one. That is you wanted she, to see the stalker it is girl. So, I, I own it. It's you on do the own it, don't you? It's only subbed though. I watch it subbed. I just but it, it, I get so emotionally invested in each girl. And my favorite one is a friend of his little sister's. Now that's not creepy because they're both in high school. And uh, he goes to school with her, and you don't need to explain so why something's adorable. not creepy. Okay, <laughs> she's so adorable and timid and shy, and her whole thing is him trying to help her get out of that, and they end up together, and she's just so adorable. It, hold up, it's his sister. It's his sister's friend. Ah, okay. Relax. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> so that's a Gami uh, SS. That is the one. My number one romance anime. What little bit I've seen of that, it looks great. Uh, I think the episode, the the arc that I saw, I think I saw all the way through, was the girl on the swim team. Yes, that she's my second favorite girl. Yeah, she. Uh, I can't speak to her with relation to the other girls, but it seemed like a very good show. Every girl is flushed out, have a complete personality, has their own circumstances. They all have substance and depth, and it's so beautiful. It's so well done. They didn't cop out. They're like, oh, he ended up with her. He ended up with her. It's not forced. There's no... It's like, here's your happy ending in six to seven different ways. Yes, (laughs) and I love happy endings. And they all stop the story perfectly. They all stop the story perfectly. Mm -hmm. My favorite saying is, if you want a happy ending, it depends on where you stop the story. And they nailed it. Cool. And unlike unlike all of these terrible endings for the school days video game. Yes. <laughs> where it's just this like one's every the exact single opposite. I jump off a building and my head hits the concrete first. Or this one's the opposite. I cut your head off with a hacksaw, or I push you in front of a train, and, uh, and then I cut your 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 side chick open to see if she was pregnant. Oh, she That's was. the anime ending. The I video know. game ending has like twelve more horrifying bad ends. Yes. That are like, oh my god. Happy Halloween, folks! <laughs> <laughs> I could do an evil laugh. I'm no. going to not. Yeah, no. Because I'm not sure who's home. Okay, but <laughs> everyone. Do your, uh, do your uh, story. Um, I mean, do your anime. Well, yes. hmm. Uh, if you don't... Agami SS is on uh, GoGo Anime. It's on GoGo. It's beautiful. I own it. I bought it. That's how much of a, a testament it is that I love it. I bought it full price. There are a few I could mention. Uh, I guess I'll just bring it up right off the bat because it is my favorite anime, uh, Toradora. Yes. And that show, oh man, the roller coaster, man. It's 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 a roller coaster, but not as bad as some other shows like Canon, mm-hmm. which Canon's another one I'm planning to mention. But in 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 Toradora. God, God, God damn, they do such a good job at making you like these characters. Even the characters that you're not necessarily supposed to like that much, like Ami. Yeah. Like, they, they do such a good job. And it's not about romance. You know, it's a romance anime. That's the core story. But it's about... No, I'm mentioning that that... DK almost fell over in his chair. Ha! Everybody point and laugh. Point and laugh at DK in the comments. I did almost fall. My chair readjusted itself on itself. Yeah, but he had this look on his face like, oh shit, I almost fell. (laughs) Everybody point and laugh at DK in the comments. But, uh, yeah. Toradora is... It's got... It's certainly a romance. But the, the main point of the story is... Growing up's an aspect of it, but it's about the people 
who come into your life and they, they affect you in ways that you wouldn't necessarily have, would not necessarily necessarily have expected them to affect you. It's about the, the ways all of these people's lives intersect and then intertwine and, and come together the way that they, they inevitably they come together and blossom help everyone around them for the better. You know, it's, it's one of the better stories I've seen. Like we, we've touched on a previous uh, podcast where I mentioned that Ryuji is one of my favorite anime characters, period. And that's because he starts the story being this thuggish looking neat freak. And everyone in his class is afraid of him. And by the end of the show, you know, they grow up. Yes. And like I said a second ago, it's like it's got elements of this is a story about growing up, but they, by the end of the show, his class loves him. The class, the class, the, the rest of the class becomes part of the story. You know, the teacher becomes a good part of the story. It's, it's about life streams, you know, and... I'll share something a little personal with the listeners. Um, I was a bit of a shut in after high school. You know, I did not get out much. And Toradora is the show that made me want to, it made me get out of the house. It gave me that kick when I needed it because of the way the story was, you know, it's like, it kind of, it kind of gave me hope, you know, and sometimes fiction can do that. I don't feel dumb for saying that fiction can have profound effects on you like that. And that's exactly what this discussion is about. Exactly. Is anime in particular, which stories had the most impact on you. And I don't think you can get more impactful than a show that made someone with severe depression and antisocial disorders get up and get out of the house. And in a lot of ways, I, I owe my meeting DK to Toradora. Funnily enough. Oh, shucks. You're gonna um, make me cry. Nya, nya. But yeah, <laughs> uh, Toradora, for the way that it portrays all of these people's lives coming together and how they affected each other in ways they never expected. And that's not just romance. Uh, I'll pass it on to you. So my, uh, my second one is a uh, photo cannon. Cano. Okay. So it's just photo K A N O. Okay. Uh, it's another multi, you know, timeline uh, romance. It's only 13 episodes long. Ago. Uh, it's not as, the characters aren't as well driven and defined, flushed out, but it still has this deep mutual feeling, deep emotional investment feeling as you watch it. And there's about seven different girls not all of them romance. Romance, romance. Not some romance. Uh, <laughs> there is one where it's episode 13, I think. And since it's from episode 1 to 12, there's... I'm still hung up on the two episodes, Two episodes per girl. And the last one, it's about a sister. Okay. That's not blood-related. Don't care. And it's romantic... Between the two of them. Um, oh, that, what the hell was that show? Was it... It was not Please Twins. Please Twins was actually a very sweet yes. show. Please Twins was actually very good. There's a show where he's got twin sisters. Okay. Kiss. Excess, yes, yes. That was shit. That was sick. <laughs> <laughs> but they're, they're not his blood sisters? Not even a little. And their parents know that? 
They know that. And they try, uh, yeah, no, the, 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 the kids know that, but the parents know that. And the parents try to... Uh, hook them up, yes. Hook it's, them up. It's many levels of screwed up. There's another show with a red-headed girl with, like, orange hair where it is her biological brother. I haven't seen that and one. And the whole show is her trying to lay him. And I'm like, I... Anime people. Yeah. All varieties of good and fucked up. Fuck Japan. Anyway. <laughs> I love Japan. I... Japan has a lot of class system issues. <laughs> I, I, I'd move to uh, New Zealand. Uh, <laughs> if I had to move somewhere. But uh, it's, it's a very uh, romance-centric one. Uh, it's all about... It all starts and it all evolves around him taking pictures. His dad gives him a camera at the beginning of the show, first episode, huh. and he starts getting into photography, and everything unfolds from there. It is one of my top ten most favorite animes. If you have top ten, would watch again. Yes, top ten would. Ten out of ten. Ten out of ten would watch again. If you if you haven't seen it, go see it. It's photo K A N O, and is beautiful. The art's amazing. It's in in the uh, anime. It even shows him taking pictures, and it shows the pictures after he's taken them. That's cool. I can imagine like and and like the the zooms and all that stuff as he takes them. It's it's really if you're a film buff, if you like camera buff, you gotta watch it. Uh, High School of the Dead did stuff like that, where uh, it incorporated images into. Each of the endings. Yes. High School of the Dead is certainly not a good example for our topic today. No. <laughs> so High School of the Dead, I maintain it's a good show because it feels like an anime as directed by Michael Bay. Yeah, except for Michael Bay died after he made it. <laughs> so yeah. you'll never get a second season. A lot of people get that confused with uh, High School DxD. Really? Yes. A lot of people are like, oh, the, the next season got canceled because... Uh, the creator died, and I'm always depressed when I hear that. And then I realize they're talking about high school DA, uh, high school of the dead. Oh, that is that the case? Someone died. The guy that made high school of the dead died. Oh, that sucks. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's why there's never a second season, and the manga just stops at 31 volumes. It sucks. Chapters, third chapter. It was, it was good zombie schlock. Yes. It was very good. Very good zombie show. I liked it. It was it was Ichi, but I like Ichi. I tolerated it. It's uh it's yeah, he died. He uh the creator passed away. That sucks. Uh so the, no, that, there was something similar that happened to the uh So you've got Gundam. Yes. And you've got Gundam Seed. Mm hmm And you have Gundam Seed Destiny. I am William Ball. I don't blame you. But then we were supposed to have a Gundam Seed Destiny movie. Yeah. To wrap up the Cosmic Era universe. Yes. And the creator's wife got sick with cancer? Yes. And at this point, I would certainly hope not, but she's probably passed away. And she was a big part, part of, of the writing process. So. I hope she's at peace. I hope she's better. Yeah. If she's not, I hope she's at peace. I, I would hope that. It's a terrible tragedy, but I hope that went as as well as can be expected. Yeah. It's always sad. Yeah. But, uh, Photo Kanon. Uh, Photo Kanon. Photo Kano. I, I could never say it right. Photo Kano? Kano. Yeah, thank you. It sounds Photo like Kano. how it would be. Uh, it is just truly beautiful, and it's one of my favorites by far. Cool. Especially since I like cameras. So, so what is the circumstances for him taking photographs? It, it varies between girls. Uh, some one's his childhood friend that they got estranged, and now they're they they get back together. He, he ends up with each of yeah, not all of them. Right, because you did say this was alternate realities. As yes, well? just like a, a gummy essence. Okay. Surprise! There's more than one show like that. That's pretty neat. There's there's a few. There's a few more that I'm looking for that I can't find, but it's it's. All evolves around somehow, one way or another, him taking pictures. Like the the swim president gets caught jumping over a fence because she's late, and he blackmails her <laughs> into him taking pictures, and that goes into romance. Oh. <laughs> oh. 
But like you black, you were like he black starts good with blackmail. <laughs> you were like he blackmails her, and I'm like, oh really? And then you're like into taking pictures, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> I'm like, no, that didn't go exactly the way I was hoping. <laughs> per. Uh huh. But that's my uh, second one. I don't really have any uh, obvious one. Angel Beats. I think Angel Beats. Uh, it's everyone. Angel Beats deserves an honorable mention between the both of us. Yes. Angel Beats will. Angel Beats made me cry like a baby. But no, me too. I'm nowhere not near as much as the one that I'm going to mention in a minute. Okay. But uh, yes, Angel Beats will do that. On all kinds of levels. Angel Beats is fun, funny, happy, sad, heartbreaking, heart lifting. shredding, and heart lifting. Yeah, it's 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 all colors of the rainbow. It's schizophrenic. <laughs> <laughs> not as schizophrenic. It's multiple personality disorder. Not as schizophrenic as some shows. Like I've seen uh certainly not a good example of our topic today, but my bride is a mermaid. Oh, that show was crazy. It, that, that show was psychotic. insane. <laughs> I I couldn't handle that. I have that show on DVD and I can't get farther than like four episodes in. Yeah. It, I have to I stop. Remember. And there was that. There Whoever was that, made that was on cocaine. What was the show? Heaven's Lost Property. Where. And I ha again, I haven't gotten very far in it either because it's kind of disgusts me. Yes. But. You'd have the first half of the episode, and it would be played almost completely straight. And then the second half, it just flips and it loses all its goddamn mind. Every episode, I, every single, and again, I don't know for a fact because I haven't gotten very far. It's it, every episode. It's every episode, really. Yes. Oh my god. So yeah, the first episode, yeah, it's totally straight. I could almost get into a show like that. And they're then it's they're just robot angels, stuff. and then ha like. At Halfway mark for every episode. It goes completely insane. Like I, I, I don't need to watch that. No, you don't. I just have a thing for angels, and there's not a lot of angel options that are worth a damn when it comes to anime. There's like Angel Sanctuary, which is weird and incestuous God, no. and no. gross. It's like we were talking about incest a minute ago. It's like don't watch Angel Sanctuary. There's angels if that in the bothers you. <laughs> <laughs> no, those don't count. Uh, there's Evangelion, and that uh, that's not angels the way angels are supposed to be. You know, there anything with angels in it in in anime usually tends to suck. Listeners, if you have any uh, anime of note featuring angels, biblical angels, I guess, please leave them in the comments because I would love to be exposed to them. Also, like, comment, and subscribe, because I have no uh, shame. <laughs> I'm a whore! <laughs> a video whore. Yeah, well. Uh, I make videos. I don't go on video. <laughs> but you want, me, you want me to mention my next one? Yeah, your baton. All right. Uh, the next one I'm going to mention, I, I'm ashamed to say I almost forgot. It almost slipped my mind. And that is Anohana, the flower we saw that day. Oh, man, that tore me apart, man. You have seen it? Yes. That that anime, I was crying like a little girl at the end of that show. It wrecked me. It is so good. But yeah, the uh, if you have not seen Anohana, you have to go find Anohana. Uh, funnily enough, uh, you might not know this, Anohana is made by the same creators that made Toradora. So, and... Side character. Hold, hold on, hold on. It's made by the same people who did Toradora, which is, again, my other favorite anime. But that comes full circle when I tell you that they also did, the same creative team, did Iron-Blooded Orphans. Okay, that's awesome. Does that make sense? Yes, because of honestly, how it, it all, all of those end. I have not seen Iron-Blooded Orphans, and I'm hoping that it can hold a candle to Anohana or Torador. It does. And that's good to know, because the last couple of Gundam series we've got haven't done a very good job. My two favorite Gundams <laughs> is Gundam Wing 
Iron Blooded Orphans. Cool. Period. Eighth I, MS team. Eighth MS team is, is my it's on favorite. Its, it's, it's on its own pedestal. It's on a different That's tier. That's quintessential. Yeah, that needs to be watched. It's on a different tier, but that's a romance. It has romance, and it's it's evolved around romance too. Yes, I've, I've talked about Toradora's plot on the show before. That being said, uh, a slight description of Anohana is that it is about a group of childhood friends who drift apart after one of their friends dies yes. when they're children. And the main character, Jinto, um, can see her. Later. Yes. He become as a result, they all suffer. They all drift apart. They all have their issues as a result of that happening to them as children. But he, uh, the main character becomes a bit of a, uh, he's a, he becomes a bit of a shut in. And one day, uh, while he's hanging out at the house, the, the girl that died when they were kids just shows up and nobody else can see her. I've seen it. Yeah. I, I'm telling the listeners. Yes. Yes. I'm saying it for the benefit of the listeners. Sorry. Um, I, I, we have such I'm in looking, depth conversations that I forget they exist. I'm looking. No at, offense. I'm looking at DK, so he's like, "Oh, you're obviously talking to me." It's like, no, I'm looking at you, so I feel less crazy for talking to myself. Oh, we're both insane. <laughs> Let's not worry about that. But yeah, um, she just shows up one day, uh, and yeah. he can see her. And if I remember correctly, he thinks she's like a heat-induced hallucination. <laughs> so he kind of brushes her off at first, but it's one of the most beautiful, heart-wrenching animes I have ever seen because it goes through each of the people, um, each of the friends. It goes through each of them, and you find out like how that has affected them, even if it's not initially apparent that it has affected them. It's affected all of them. Yes. And it's so painful and so beautiful. It's a bittersweet anime. It's certainly bittersweet, but like if you're it's 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 beautiful, it's heartbreaking. But again, we set the precedent for the animes we're talking about are just the ones that affected us emotionally the most. Yes. Not necessarily positive. <clears throat> This is a definitely like it's definitely a bittersweet ending, but it's still a sweet ending. As as heartbreaking as it is. Did you did you have another one you wanted to mention? I do not. That. I could I could I could mention dot hack sign. Okay, no. no. <laughs> Depressive. I, I could mention the way dot hack sign was the first anime I ever really watched and how it's one of the most depressing shows I've ever seen. Okay, how so it, I will it legitimately makes me uncomfortable on several levels. I will talk to the group right now, uh, the peoples right now, the nerdy. Peoples! Uh, when I was younger, I suffered immensely from social anxiety and depression. I watched Dot Hex Sign and it almost pushed me to the point of suicide. <laughs> Ew. Not even joking. Uh -huh. It's a real thing. Uh -huh. it, it almost happened. So if you have depression and you want to watch it, know that it's going to be depressed. You're going to get more depressed. <laughs> I would advise, advise against it. It almost put, it pushed me to the tipping point and almost pushed me off the ledge. That, Just a forewarning. That's terrible. Yes. I, I like the I show. I watched the whole thing. Every episode, I it pushed me to the tipping point. Last episode was no different. And then I just never watched it again. Which was the last episode for you? Because they had a final episode for it that never really aired. The one that... Uh, the I did not watch that. Did they dance like monkeys? No. They were dancing like monkeys? No. It was a happy ending. Because... I did not watch that. I watched the ending where he... It, the, the, the ending of Dot Hack Sign, the real ending of Dot Hack Sign, takes place after they the get ending of the video games. Yes. So you have Dot Hack, 
For those who don't know, Dot Hack Sign is an anime that ran congruently with the release of four Dot Hack video games, with yes. their each each having their own respective titles. Uh, I'm not going to try to recall them all off the top like of my head. Like Signs, Root, Excel, so on and so forth. Well, the four the four original games were the one that ran congruent with Dot Hack well, Sign, like and the they animal. started they started with Infection. Yeah, and Dot Hack Sign is a prequel. And part of it's running congruently with the show. Then the then the anime ends, and the story for the games starts. And then after the games end, Sign had a follow up episode, which included the characters from the video games because the Sign characters were in the uh, were in the games as well. Where it's the happy ending. If you don't want to play the GU trilogy that came afterward, okay. because GU has its own set of continuity problems. Yeah, I, I didn't watch any Dot Hack after that, except for Root the movie. Roots. Yeah. There. Roots is an anime. Yeah. That ran concurrently with the GU. Okay, so. But and it I'm was just, the exact same thing. It was a prequel to the games, and then the games ran concurrently. I just wanted to give a warning. It is very depressing through 90% of it. It is. There are moments in it that make me sick. Yes. Uh, that's also because I was very young when I was first exposed to it. It was my first anime. And just sorry. some of the things that I know, I know, but some of the things in it were a little tough to stomach as a child. And I didn't get to see the last episode till I bought the DVDs as an adult. I've never seen it still to this day. I would show it to you. It's only twenty. It's like twelve. It's it's standard length, okay. and it's happy. Uh, but that being said, the main character is so depressing. Yeah. Um, and depressed. Yeah. But like, and you can see, like I I identify with Ryuji. I identify with Jinto for the same reasons that I I mentioned that Toradora kind of helped me out when I watched it. Like. Toradora maybe get out of the house because that was a shut-in. Jinto is a shut-in because of something terrible that happened to him when he was a kid. Uh, but we felt, we definitely felt that Dot Hack Sign is worth mentioning. Both of us agreed to this before we recorded. Yes, very much so. Because it is so, it, it affected both of us on such a level that it, it warranted discussion. Yes. Uh, you- in the same way that we agreed that Angel Beats deserved a mention as well. Yes. And I love Angel Beats. To this day I love Angel Beats. Main character in that is a is a goddamn hero. Yes, very <laughs> much so. Uh, I could mention one more. Okay, go one more and then we'll uh, go ahead and wrap up. Cool. Um Welcome to the NHK. Now, this this is not for the reasons you think it is. Welcome to the NHK is a is, is it's great. It's a great show. But I was having moments with it where I can't ex- necessarily explain why, but each of the other characters besides the main character, I thought they had something massively, massively sinister going on behind the, behind the scenes. So I'm like, I'm thinking, oh, this main girl's really interested in helping this guy. Is she going to like Make him enjoy his life so that she can sacrifice him to a cult or something. Wow, what the <laughs> hell is what is wrong with you? His best friend. It's like you, he's sitting in the park. It was a conspiracy anime to you. I, it was. It Which wasn't. Is, how perfect was that? Is that it's welcome to the NHK, the anime with the main character who's obsessed with conspiracies. And I saw a conspiracy in each and every single one of the side characters that are introduced. And his none of them friend, existed. None of them existed. His best friend that I thought was, and I wonder if that was on purpose. It would have to be a very subtle thing. His best friend. There are moments where he's in the park and, you know, it's alluding to, like, there's a rapist or, like, a, a guy who's going into the park and messing with girls. I'm like, is that his buddy? Wow. The one who's making the gal games? And it does things every once in a while to make you think that and uh oh what's the girls name? i don't remember their names of course it's been it's been a very long time since i watched it i own it on dvd it would be a good thing to revisit but uh 
it actually kind of goes there. Because he meets up with the girl he knew when he was a, in uh, in school. Yes. And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah she's cool. She's normal. And, and then they go, and she she's a member of a suicide pact. Like, they're all going to kill themselves. Yeah, I, I <laughs> forgot about that. And it's like every... Oh, oh this, wow. There, there was another girl who was like a member of a pyramid scheme. Yes. And I thought something... And she, and she tried to pawn it off on him, right? Something like that. And oh, I, wow. Oh man, but, but that, yeah, that's what I thought about the the girl. Is it's like she's gonna sacrifice him to a demon or something? Because <laughs> <laughs> she's gonna summon Cthulhu. What the hell, man? <laughs> then he's gonna be willing to do it. That's kind of what happened at the end. <laughs> it's kind of what happened at the end. Kind of. Uh, but in the happy way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how happy? In the happy, happy way. <laughs> I just, I, I would, I, I really do, really want to. Revisit Welcome to the NHK and just just talk about that on the podcast at some point. It's like, yeah, each and every one of these characters, I thought they had some really dark and sinister things going on that we couldn't see. And I was sort of right. <laughs> and completely wrong at I, the same time. Yeah, yeah, well, kind of. It's like she, the, the main girl, she certainly did have some terrible shit going on behind the scenes. Yes. They weren't the, the, Dark sinister stuff that Demon you cult. Well, she shows up trying to sell Bibles. Yes. Or something like that. And it's like, cult. <laughs> <laughs> she's she's trying to make him think his life is worth a damn so that when she sacrifices him, it's worth something. <laughs> wow. That's... <laughs> or so that he's willing to do it. Yeah, it's horrible. It's like, become dependent on me. But, you know, Welcome to the NHK is one of my... Uh, it's one of my favorites. Uh, it's great. Uh, but I guess we can go ahead and wrap it up. We're two hours and seven. Yeah, we're in, we're in, we're over two hours in. <laughs> so we have we have met our quota. Yep, yeah, uh, we're gonna try to make it uh, about two hours long each episode of this podcast. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, this is the episode title is going to be. We'll figure it out. Well, no, let's let's go with uh, selling your soul to a cult. Dice, dice, and more dice? Dice, dice, and more dice. There you guys got it. Dice, dice, and more dice. All right, all right. Oh, cool. if you guys enjoyed this podcast, this is DK. And this is Ospin. Uh, likes, comment, and subscribe so you can get this video out more. Share it. Get it out more. Com uh, comment so we can have a discussion. Be sure to uh, watch our other shows that we have running. Uh, I think the one that you've got going that's the most popular on the channel is Fun Facts. Yes. Family Friendly. It is completely family fun. Uh, family friendly. Uh, family right now I'm friendly. doing comic books, so Red Hood should be out the day we record this. I'm honestly kind of looking forward to that. Uh, and yeah, please like, comment, subscribe, because we are whores and shameless. And we want people to listen to us, because we have no lives. <laughs> <laughs> well, later nerdians, remember, you're always welcome in the kingdom of nerdum. Salutations. Have a good one.